James, thank you so much for joining us here today on APTN in Focus. Now, we saw a little bit of, of what you do in the, in the previous story. Can you explain a bit more of, of what it is that you do? Yeah, thanks for having me. So what I do, I've been, been uh, hired by my, my nation, Hives the Nation, to, to do outreach for our, for our people that are, are struggling in the downtown east side of Vancouver, lower mainland. So um, it was kind of a, it was, it wasn't anything that uh, we had, that we had uh, planned and made a big, a big, uh, big plan to do is kind of just one of our, one of our counselors was down there uh, looking for a family member and he noticed that a lot of our people were struggling down there. So uh, this position came available and I was, I was blessed to, to be, be chosen for it. And the objective is to to guide our people in the right direction, you know. And uh, as you know, a lot of our people have, um, are still feeling the impacts of residential school and the interjudicial traumas that come with it. And we have a lot of people are running, not just our people, but all. We have, I think every nation in Canada, mainly BC, have have some in the downtown east side, yeah. Vancouver. Well, and so. Sorry, James, well, why was this something that you wanted to get into when, when you saw the position? Um, I, I'm, I'm a former addict myself. Um, I'm in March 25th, I'll be nine years for my wife and I uh, celebrating our healing journey. And I, I, I had spent some time in downtown Eastside myself. And I was, uh, I was running. And when my wife had gotten sick and we had to go to Vancouver our first year of sobriety and um, I had to do, I did a walk just to get it out of my system so that that, that power that that pull of the downtown east side didn't have me anymore and when I did that I saw a lot of in that walk I saw a lot of our people struggling a lot of our people are hurting so once I knew I was comfortable down there I started going down there and just you know uh, handing out coffees or anybody wanted to talk Right, and then uh, one day I saw one of our counselors down there. Uh, he was looking for a family member, and uh, I helped him. Didn't find him. And two weeks later, I got a call. Said I put it on a table, um, our council table. What I saw down there, where people hurting and struggling, and we can't let that happen. So I put it, I put it up forward that we need on the table that we need somebody there, an outreach worker. So and I said, I put your name forward. I said, that's fine. That's okay. And two weeks, two weeks after, uh, and this is where I think Creator is doing his work. Uh, Greater Vancouver, over too many people in Greater Vancouver. I was in the same gas bar as another counselor who was down there. And she comes up to me and puts her hand out and she goes, just cut off the phone. And I just finished our meetings and congratulations. You're our new garbage worker for downtown inside of Vancouver. And uh, at that moment, I knew, I, I, I remember my first week of sobriety, my healing journey, an elder had told me, I shared a bit of my story, and he goes, well, it's obvious, creators kept you here for a reason, and you got to find out what that reason is. And when, when I was, when I was uh, told about this, that position, I knew, I knew this is why a creator kept me here for. Well, in your experience, so who or, or maybe what do you think is could be responsible or partly responsible for those that are houseless or, or on the streets? It, it's a trauma. It's the traumas that are going through in our communities that are still happening, right? They're, you know, it's, the, those traumas haven't stopped, even though there is schools that, that have far been closed, but they're still happening. You know, and our, our people are running, you know, and uh, they, maybe they try to find that voice and they're shunned. And, you know, rather than being the, in the same community as their abusers, they run. And unfortunately, the last place they, they, they'll see is the downtown east side. So what kinds of supports, James, then, um, maybe if you could detail maybe a few specific that you think are needed to help change the way things are going currently? I, I really feel uh, very, very strongly about this this uh, this outreach program that we have here. Um, it, it's I think it's a missing link to a lot of our people's healing. 
because we go into the we go into those comfort zones. Uh, it's a back alley, the doorway, or in, in our small in our in our villages communities, we go into their their houses, knock on our door, we pick them up out of the alley and say, "Come on, let's go for a coffee." Gain that trust because you know, that trust is a big issue, and you know we start we start from there, and you know and sometimes we get lucky and maybe maybe that person is it. Okay, let's do it. I'm ready. Or in many cases, uh, with my clients down there, it, it's taken three years to get to a point where okay, let's do this. Well, so I feel you know fun having that familiar face from home, that, that friendly, that friendly face that that no, it's not just a flash in the pan, but it, they know it's going to be there, right? And it continues to be there day in day out, and gain that trust that is badly is badly needed. You know, and uh, start, you start you start from there. Well, unfortunately, James, there's just so many stories that are similar across the country. Um, and just on that last note that you touched of seeing like sort of a friendly face, I mean, how important is it that, you know, you've sort of also been in their shoes at the same time? How important of a connection is that as well, that, you know, you know firsthand what they're going through? I think it's, I think it's a, a big part of the job uh, when we've, had, we've we created a society and it's called All Nations Army Society. Uh, I'm the founder of it. And it's it started start from the vision from the first year of our, of, of my position, 2017. And when when I when I get invited to communities to do a talk, or share my story, and I always encourage, I like to speak to the to the, the leadership about the importance of this. And when they ask, who do you think would be a good fit? And I said somebody who had lived experience, because it, I. I, I I uh, link it to something like a child, you know, a child feels that bad energy from somebody and they go high behind mom's leg or dad's leg. Right. It's kind of the same thing with our, our people that are going through this trauma. They know when somebody's genuine and they know when somebody's reading from the book, right? And I, I, I feel, I feel the success that we're having with this program and we are having uh, good success getting our people into a healing journey is that because that uh, we will have that lived experience. Now, James, I don't want to get too political, but I, I did want to ask, like, how much responsibility do you think the government um, should have in bringing people out of poverty and whether that be in terms of funding or different programs? I mean, where does the government um, align along with what you are doing? I think I think they have a big responsibility to, you know, to, you know, to fund pro programs like the outreach program, and you know that that the to find the importance, the importance of what we're doing and the success we're having, and you know, I think that that is uh, when a few bands have asked, what what is it, what would the cost be, and when they know the cost, it. That's a big, uh, that's a big roadblock because they don't have the funding. Fortunately, with that highs that we have our own source of revenue, which, which is uh, paying for my, my, my position. But you know, other bands aren't as, as fortunate. So that funding is is crucial. You know, and uh, again, and I have, I've had some political leaders that have come down a, a walk with me in a downtown east side. And they see the importance. They said, "This is something we got to be backing." I said, "I said, I says, absolutely. This is the missing link to where people's healing." I and truly believe that. James, are you able to give us sort of a, a short and a long-term look out of, of any plans you might have, or or um, your nation might have, um, or do you have any expectations when it comes to hopefully solving this issue or greatly reducing it in the future? I think. I think the big, the key word is healing. Uh, in order to move, in order for us to move forward as a people, we need to start with that healing. And that, that goes for the housing. Yeah, we can house them as many times as you want, but you know, when, when they're so used to that dysfunction, that uh, it's, it's going to be like a revolving door. So, you know, that I think we need to focus on healing before before anything else.
Well, James, we'll have to leave the conversation there, but I want to say a big thank you, Miigwech, to you for coming on and sharing a bit of, of your knowledge and insight and, and what you think can be done um, when it comes to the, the houseless and, and you know this issue. So thank you so much for joining us, Miigwech. Thank you for having me.